looks like it's back. I thought the car was gone forever. I really didn't think so. But this is the vehicle that the lady, I had to use my kill switch because she didn't want to bring it back. Don't seem like any uh, damage or anything on it. Looks like the same little car that it's always been. So yeah, that's my other baby over there. And another one over there. They're all over. But uh, this is the car that she didn't want to bring back. But I had to do the kill switch. I had to activate the kill switch for the starter to make her bring the dang on car back. More details in just one moment. <laughs> Turn that down before we get our video knocked off. So what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? This is the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke, Chris Monroe, and I'm right back at you with another real estate video. Today's video is not about real estate though. It's about Turo. It's another Turo video, all these videos, but real estate on wheels is what it is. And we just got one of our vehicles back from the ordeal where I had to use the kill switch to get her to activate. So this lady rented my car a couple of days ago. Um, what was that, Thursday or Friday? She rented the car. She came and picked it up from here at this location, one of my uh, parking lots here outside of my business. So she came and picked it up. She seemed kind of sketchy and funny at that time, but whatever, you know, everybody's kind of weird because I normally don't meet these people. But when she came, she happened to catch me here at the office. So she came and um, basically rented the car. She showed me her driver's license. Um, it was expired, but she had some documents showing that it was uh, updated or something. So I took pictures of all of that and uploaded it into the system on Turo.com, which is a platform where you can rent your vehicle out two people kind of like airbnb for cars instead of renting a house or an apartment you can rent your vehicles so i have a fleet of vehicles up on there and this particular vehicle this black hyundai accent went out on a rental she's supposed to rent it for one day so really in reality whenever i see a one day rental my eyes get kind of booked like one day who does one day whatever let her rent it so she rented it for one day and I'm thinking, well, she'll bring it on back tomorrow. Nope. Uh, then she sent me a message. She's supposed to be bringing the vehicle back at 5 o'clock that day. And so she was like, yeah, I could bring it back now, but um, I really want to extend it, but I don't get paid and get my money to tonight at 10 o'clock. So I'll pay it tonight at 10 o'clock and yada, 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 excuse, 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 right? So I'm thinking, well, maybe she got some excuses, maybe something going on, maybe life happened. So I'm not worried about it because the car is protected when it's out on Turo. Um, it's rented on their platform and we get the insurance. We actually have full coverage. I don't know. Do we have full coverage on that one? I don't know. Maybe I'm on a, I'm on a 75% plan on that one. So they have different tiers of insurance. So I have the insurance on it. Um, she rented it out. She kept it past the time of five o'clock on yesterday. So I'm looking like you're going to bring the car back. Or are you trying to extend it? What's going on? She didn't do it. And so she ended up um, keeping the vehicle past the time, a whole 24 hours past the time she's supposed to have been bringing it back. So after 24 hours, you can escalate it with Turo to their safety, their trust and safety team. So they'll go and start trying to call them and reach out to them and tell them bring the car back and all that type of stuff. So I got them involved. I'm involved. The car is over 24 hours late and she stopped messaging me. So I'm like, uh, hello, are you going to be bringing the car back? Um, you might have seen the, the actual screenshot I put up, if I have it put up, who knows. But nevertheless, I had the, um, the message on there thinking that, oh, you know, you're, gonna, you know, you're bringing it back, you're going to extend it. You got to call Turo and tell them to connect your trip from yesterday because it shows that it's already been returned, even though you haven't returned it. Don't want to be too confusing, but nevertheless, 24 hours went by. Oh, wow, we need some gas on this car. Yikes. This one is a gas guzzler. So I'm thinking, that, yeah, she's going to bring it back. So she stopped responding. She went ghost on me. She said, oh, well, I'm going to show him. So I'm looking at it on a GPS tracking system, which I always recommend to have at least two trackers, especially on your expensive cars. I have two trackers on all of my cars. 
GPS tracker so I can know where they are, but I do have another tracker that's on there that does more than just GPS or global positioning. It actually tells you when somebody is hard braking, uh, accelerating fast, and also you can lock and unlock the doors. You can actually, um, you can uh, disable the starter, which is known as a kill switch. So it's not killing the car while you're driving it. No, we don't wanna do that. That wouldn't be safe. We want to kill the starter. So we killed the starter since she wasn't responding. She didn't message me back. I called her. I'm like, I'm not gonna worry her. Let me see where she's at on the thing. Oh, she's at a store, the Goodwill. Bloop. Let's go ahead and cut her off. I bet she respond now. So about an hour went by after I disabled the starter and I seen her parked on this big parking lot, which was the Goodwill. And lo and behold, oh, she wakes up. So I'm like, hey, what's going on? She like, oh, did you start turn the car off? Oh, now you want to respond. You didn't want to respond before. So I, my goal was to go ahead and let the car stay disabled until she paid. So what I did, the car was out of St. Charles, Missouri. I live in St. Louis. So I drove up to St. Charles where she was at to see the car because I was going to go just get it really. But I went to go see what was going on and I saw her in her car. Now, most of you would think, you know, disable it, kill it. She's bad. She's wrong. She should have paid. She should have responded. All that. You would be correct. However, when I went to go see where she was at or where the vehicle was at, I found her, some babies in the car. She's in there bawling and crying, just sitting there with the windows down because she can't start the car. She can turn the, you know, turn the key forward, but she can't start the car because I disabled the starter. So she's in the vehicle balling out got babies in the car everybody's sitting there she's like oh i said yeah what's going on are you gonna be able to make that payment she's like oh i was going to get my my my, my money i was going to pick up my check and at four o'clock and this was like 5 30 or so yesterday when i went to go meet her oh me went to go see my car and she was like oh yeah <laughs> i'm balling and i'm like she did that before i rolled up it wasn't like she turned on the waterworks for me she was already crying when i rolled up so the good heart in me Looked at her and said, yeah, you got these babies in the car. It's getting kind of hot outside. I got these windows down. Y'all stranded. She'd been stranded there for about three hours at least, by the way, by this time, by the time I went and met, met her. About three hours. So she's really balling out, sad, waiting on somebody to come pick her up. But evidently, nobody was coming or she wasn't getting a response or I don't know what was going on. So nevertheless, I went on and said, you know what? I'm going to turn the starter back on. I turned it back on, told her to go ahead and bring the car back, return it today. Not tomorrow, not next week, return it today. She's like, oh, thank you so much, thank you so much. So I turned the starter back on. She went and took it to the car wash. You just saw what the car looked like on the beginning of the video here. And uh, it looks like it's cleaned up and she didn't destroy my car. So a lot of you felt like, you know, I will turn her off, it's her fault. But I mean, do you think I did the right thing? Do you feel like I did what I supposed to did by checking out the vehicle, checking out the situation and making a command decision you know, most of you would say, oh, no, she should have paid. We're going to leave her off. I turned her back on and allowed her to bring the car back because I could have left it out there and went and go picked up the car and did an improper return and went through the whole song and dance through Turo, which I don't want to do because right now my vehicle's unlisted. Now I got to go through that anyway, which I just found that out. I got to go through that whole thing anyway, talking about how can I get my car relisted? I got another trip coming up on Wednesday. Today is Monday. And I got another trip coming up on Wednesday that's supposed to be like five or six days or something. So the car looks good. She cleaned it up. She took it to the car wash. All of my vehicles come with a free daily wash with the local uh, car wash company here, which is something I recommend for you to have as well. Not just for your people that's renting it, but for you. I don't want to clean these cars. I want to roll that bad boy through the car wash, pay my $15 a month or whatever it is. And that's it. I have a clean car. Clean car by Chris, by the way. So... Do you think I did the right thing? I want to know what you think about this. Did I do what I supposed to did? Did I do what you would have did? Would you have said no, leave her there and let her cry, let her suffer, let her figure it out and go get your own vehicle? Or would you did, what did you have done what I did? Which was go ahead, turn the car back on. Let me know what you think. Post in the comments below. Should I have let her sit there or should I have done what I did? Which was turn the car back on and got my car back here last night so she brought it back sometime overnight or something i guess and the vehicle's here she brought it right back put the keys right back where she found it she locked it up like i told her to she followed instructions so basically she ran out of money so the upcharges for this 
I ended up getting up charges for, um, by the way, before I get into that, get this video a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a share. Stop right now. Don't listen to nothing else I'm saying. Go out, pop out. If you're looking at the video right now, push the thumbs up, the like, subscribe if you haven't already, because I do these videos telling you about what I'm doing while I'm willing and dealing out here on this thing called Turo and Hire Car. Um, so in regards to additional charges, she went over 67 miles. So that's not a lot of money. So I'm going to charge her for that. Then I'm going to charge her for the additional day usage. So, but I have to go through Turo and let them do all that. So either way, I don't lose. Even if I go through and get the money or say she didn't bring the car back, she would still be charged for that. And Turo would go and collect it. I don't have a collections team. They're going to pay me regardless, and then they'll go back and collect from her, which I'm sure she don't have the money right now because, like she said, she didn't get her check yet or whatever. But that's all not my problem. So that's the benefit of being on a platform. They can deal with the collection side, but I'm going to get my money either way, even though I still have to go through and claim everything and go through, take pictures, show, document, everything like that, the same song and dance. So that's what I had to do with that. So like I said, if you want to see more videos like this, Tell me in the comments as well. Let me know what other videos you want me to talk about as far as Turo, car sharing, and hire car. By the way, I got my first rental out on hire car um, was this weekend. She rented it for two days, and then she extended it for another two days. So she's making money. I think she's driving for Uber. I got my white Mitsubishi Galant out on hire car, testing it out. So it's already generated some money that quick. I haven't been paid for it yet. However, it's generated uh, four days worth of money already. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. Like I said, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, post it down in the video here in the comments. If you are looking to get an actual coach to actually help you get your business set up, whether it's talking about real estate, whether it's talking about Turo, whether it's talking about hire car or getting up on these platforms and start making your cash flow go, because they call me Cash Flow Monroe, let me know check out my website chrismonroestl.com right there you can actually put in for a call or consultation or we can do a video chat where i do a video share my screen things like that so i do do that with my coaching students as well we do weekly coaching calls we go over all the details and break things down to know which systems to use which systems not to use which processes to put in place some of the things to help you avoid problems like this because this could have been a problem if that lady just stopped uh responding what am i going to do see where my car at and go see it or some people are out here renting cars and not even having a gps tracking system what's wrong with you so that's how we do it so chris monroe stl.com that's where you can go book a call with me we can set it up just like that so with all that being said do what you do be who you be and i'll see you before you see me peace in the middle east